Alrighty, we're back. Today, um, I'm doing lessons for this entire week, and this lesson then would be for Thursday. This is uh, the first lesson, our first part of Thursday's three parts. Um, I'm working to keep a lot of variety going in the lessons. I hope that that is um, good for you. Um, I know that some lessons um, appeal to some people more than others. You may come across a lesson that you go, ah, this isn't interesting, or I already know this, and just kind of blow through it, um, skip it, or something like that, um, and I understand. Um, then perhaps the next lesson will be one that uh, is of interest to you, or maybe one that you think, oh, I need I need to review that particular topic. So um, I'm trying to keep a lot of variety, and I hope that's not real confusing to you. Um, today, we're going to do a grammar lesson um, in this segment, and uh, we're going to be looking at the conditionals. Um, these are not new to you. Um, they do, however, um, warrant um, repeated study just to keep them fresh in, in our minds and to try to become more comfortable using conditionals in English. Um, we have the zero conditional, the first and the second and the third, and these are known as real and unreal um, conditionals. You may have heard, heard them referred to that way. Um, the, the conditional simply means that something depends upon something else happening. There is a condition there. One thing depends upon another. Uh, the zero conditional is the easiest one, I guess, uh, because it is completely fact-based. Um, we can rely upon it because over time, repeated circumstances have shown that um, that it is a true uh, or real uh, statement, such as, if you touch a hot stove, you will burn yourself. We know that is um, fact, that the, the if part of that uh, statement um, will definitely have this result, okay? And we can count on that. Um, if you, um, um, if you speed, you are placing others at risk as well as yourself. If you speed, you are placing others at risk as well as yourself. We know that to be true. We have history for that. We have repeated circumstances where speeding has harmed the lives of others or the life uh, or lives of those who are in the vehicle that is speeding. So I won't spend time on the zero because it is pretty obvious um, and, we, and we know that it's fact-based. The others, however, have that element of possibility in them. Um, and it's a matter of whether that possibility is small or great as to um, whether we classify them as real or unreal. So let's have a look at um, the pattern that we're going to find in real um, conditional sentences. The pattern for real conditional. Excuse me, my computer times out so quickly sometimes. And I have to log back in. Give me one moment. I apologize. I recently, um, I recently changed my login into my computer because it was time to probably change that for security purposes. And um, I had not changed it in a very, very long time, probably two years, maybe, uh, something like that. And now I'm having the hardest time remembering the new one and I every time I put in the old one and it doesn't work and then I have to remember my new one and it's hard hard to change 
hard to change those things sometimes. All right, so we're gonna look at the pattern, and the pattern is pretty simple. There are two clauses in um, a real conditional. Um, one clause is known as the if clause, and it contains the present, uh, the present tense uh, verb. So if plus the present tense verb makes up the um, if clause. And then we have the um, main clause, which will contain will plus the base verb. Will plus the base verb. Now it doesn't matter which order these are in. So we can reverse this and the meaning will remain the same. It will just sound different. So let's take a look at this sentence. If I study for the test, comma, kind of like an introductory phrase, it's, it needs that comma, um, I will get a good grade. All right. So the condition here is studying. If I do this, if I do what, if I study, um, and the outcome will be um, that I should get a good grade if that happens. Um, so studying likely results in good grades. Our if clause, our main clause. Ooh, and I didn't spell this right. I was talking and writing at the same time. That doesn't always work for me. All right, so how would this sound if we flip those phrases, okay? If we start with the main phrase and then the if, um, the if phrase. I'll let you tell me or write it and then we'll check it together. It would simply be, I will get a good grade if I study for the test. When we phrase it that way, when we say it that way, we will not need a comma, okay? So when we begin with the if phrase, we need a comma. When we begin with the main phrase or the main clause, we will not need the comma. I will get a good grade if I study for the test. All right, let's try another one. And this one will be, if Jim has a second cup of coffee, he will probably be late for work. All righty, our if clause, our main clause. The condition here is that second cup of coffee. That's what this depends upon, so we call that the condition. And the outcome would be um, lateness for work. So how would this sound if we flipped those um, clauses? All right, I'm sure you got that correct. Jim will probably be late for work if he has a second cup of coffee. So we do also um, reverse the um, Subject, Jim, and the pronoun, he. If Jim has, uh, Jim will probably, excuse me, Jim will probably be late for work if he has a second cup of coffee. All right, good job. Okay, moving on, and let me scroll down to my next.
next page here. This one will do the reverse of that. They'll, they will, they'll, that's a little hard to say. They'll be ready for their concert. A lot. Okay. So we have our if clause here and our main clause here. They'll be ready for their concert if they rehearse a lot. So let's flip that and put the if clause first. If they rehearse a lot, comma, they'll be ready for their concert. Remember that when we use pronouns, um, we don't want to use them if we are using them in isolation entirely, okay? In other words, if there's no context. There needs to be context with pronouns. Um, this is obviously just a practice sentence, but I wouldn't want to say they'll and they and their if the person I'm talking to had no idea who I'm, which, you know, choir or, or band or orchestra I'm referring to, okay? So I would have to have said, you know, the um, Chattahoochee High School band uh, will be ready for their concert if they rehearse a lot. And, um, and then if I want to use the pronoun from there, that's fine. We, but just remember that pronouns really do uh, require that we uh, have that um, that we have that reference in context. All right, and the next one, I would like for you to um, kind of create. I'm going to start, and then you create the balance or the rest of, of the sentence, however you would like. If he doesn't buy a new suit, comma. All right, take a moment and complete that sentence in whatever way you would like. to finish mine out this way. If he doesn't buy a new suit, comma, he will not be dressed appropriately. Appropriately for the interview. Once again, we're using pronouns. Um, we would assume that there's context as to who we're talking about here. Um, you um, have all finished the sentence in your own ways. I happened to have used both a negative here in my if clause and a negative um, here in my main clause. That is acceptable. You know, we say that uh, that double negatives are uh, a no-no, okay? <laughs> this is an exception. Um, in conditional sentences, it is okay to use a negative in the if clause and in the main clause. Now, look at your sentence and reverse your sentence and write it down uh, with the main clause first. If 
I reverse mine, it would be, he will not be dressed appropriately for the interview if he doesn't buy a new suit. All right, great, so you can use double negatives in the case of these uh, conditional sentences. There are two um, separate clauses and you can use one in each clause. All right, here's another one um, that has a future um, aspect to it as, um, as the last one did as well. I'm, excuse me, if I'm, uh, not late for work, again, if I'm not late for work again, I won't have to look for uh, another job. Okay, this is where it gets kind of messy, I think. This is a lot of, um, a lot of the use of a of negative here and kind of um, what I consider a confusing way to say what is being said. It could be said in a simpler way. But we encounter this and we encounter this certainly um, in conversation and then you're going, wait a minute, what? <laughs> okay, that didn't quite make sense. Let's, let's, let's look at it here a little bit closely. The conditional portion, if I'm not late for work again. Okay, the assumption is that this person has been late for work, um, maybe a number of times. So if I'm not late for work again, right, I won't have to look for another job. Won't being the contraction, obviously, for will not. So let's just say will not here. I will not have to look for another job. All right. In this case, the individual has been told that if you continue to be late, you're going to be fired. Okay? So the sentence could read, if I'm not late for work again, I will get to keep my job. <laughs> that might be a little easier to understand. But in this case, they're saying, okay, if I'm not late to work again, then I'm not going to have to go out and look for another job. I will not have to go look for another job. I'll be able to keep my job. Um, we, have, we have two negatives and a little bit of an awkward, I think, sentence, but this is often how it comes out in conversation. This is often how people say this, and. And, and you are, sometimes I am too, not just, not just um, um, second language learners are confused and we have to sort of, you know, break that apart a little bit. All right, so far so good. Do remember that in the if clause, um, that our subject is going to end with, um, excuse me, our verb is going to end with an S if our subject is third person singular, okay? If our subject is third person singular, then our verb needs to end with an S. Just remember that we've had examples, but let's look at one closely. If she, okay, third person singular, watches, plural, okay? Watch, plus the S, watches. If she watches too many scary movies, she will not sleep well. Okay? Just remember that rule hasn't changed from writing the writing of any sentences. 
but we want to remember that third person singular requires a, a verb plus s, okay, a plural verb. All right. And the last one that we're going to do that's not so common um, is when we use be going to plus the base verb, or we use the present progressive. In conditional, um, in the um, conditional sentences. So let's take a look at this. Um, if it doesn't rain, okay, our our if clause. If it doesn't rain, we will go, okay, here we are in our main clause here, we will go for a walk. If it doesn't rain, we will go for a walk. Compare that to, and I'm going to have to erase something to make this, I'm going to erase this part, okay. Um, so we have some room here. Compare that to this version. If, oops, oops the board is lucky. It doesn't rain. Comma. We are going to go okay, for a walk. All right, so we have a little more of a complex um, sentence. The condition isn't changing. Um, we still have uh, the going for the walk being the condition, right? And um, um, excuse me, excuse me, the uh, rain being the condition and going for the walk being the outcome. Um, but in this case, we're using the be going to, okay? And then in the next example, the last example, if it doesn't rain, comma, we are going for a walk. So we have version of the of B, okay, and go with ING. All right. So three examples here, and I'm so sorry, I should have arranged the board differently with, well, I should have erased to begin with, using be going to plus the base verb or the present progressive of, of the verb. So if it doesn't rain, we will go for a walk. If it doesn't rain, we are going to go for a walk. If it doesn't rain, we are going for a walk. Let's flip them all around. Say them with me. We will go for a walk if it doesn't rain. We are going to go for a walk if it doesn't rain. We are going for a walk if it doesn't rain. Good job. And I went way over time. Goodbye.